take a break from typing and tune in to the Part-Time Writers Podcast, the show where two part-time writers with full-time jobs are to profit from their passions, pay their bills, and please their wives. Join hosts C.M. Raymond and Ellie Barbant as they chronicle their meteoric rise to literary mediocrity. It's the Part-Time Writers Podcast. Hello and welcome to Part-Time Writers Podcast. Part-Time Writers Podcast. Boom. I am CM, or Chris Raymond, and I'm here with Leland Barbant. <laughs> Leland, Leland is my name, that's not here. Lee Barbant. That's right. And uh, we're here to talk about the life and experiment of being part-time writers. That's right. And the podcast is all about documenting our journey to uh, one year and see if it would be possible to make enough of a living to be able to quit our day jobs if we so choose. That's right. We're sitting across from each other right now, and this is weird. It feels intense. <laughs> I disagree. And here's why you're wrong. That's what I want to say. Yeah, we're going from uh, nothing in terms of making money off of writing to hopefully, you know, a possible career. Right. If we like it. But we're also not gold rushers. Like, we're not uh, prospectors. We want to write. I thought you were a gold rusher. I was in this because I thought you were going to... You thought I was going to make you rich? Yeah. No. Oh. You're a gold digger. <laughs> All right. That's right. I got it. Hey, this is episode number three. Four. No, it's three. Oh, shoot. It three is officially three. Because we had that one on Casual Friday where I had a little bit too much to drink, and maybe we'll release it as you bloopers know, sometime. I, I've been studying the life of some famous authors, and apparently they drink a lot. So we were, <laughs> we were experimenting with a method. Yep. Um, and it failed. In podcasting. That's right. It works for me in writing, not in podcasting. <laughs> Podcast drunk. Uh, Edit it so, produce sober. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> We're big Ernest Hemingway fans. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's see. It is, as we're recording, it's February 23rd. Mm-hmm. So uh, this will go to air. I don't know. We're going to put the first few episodes up maybe next week. So we'll get it rolling online. Oh, that'll be fun. Yeah. And right now it's February 23rd, which is a special day. You know why? Are we a month in? We're one month from the day that we saved the first Word document. Wow. So the first tiny chapter That's right. uh, was January 23rd. So I'm using that as our marker. Yep. So January 23rd, 2017 will be the day that we judge whether or not we could go full-time. Yeah. And I might. I'm liking it so far. <laughs> if, this is, if, this is a, if this is the experience going forward, it's been pretty fun so far. Okay. It's so been a great month. Let me say this. One of the things, we have several things to talk about. We're going to do our updates um, of the week. Mm. We're going to also talk about virtual, I think we're going to name the episode The Week CM Freaked the Hell Out. Yep. So I had a little bit of a meltdown. But here's what I was feeling yesterday when I got out of my meltdown was the meltdown was happening because I'm not full time. And I'm, I think I'm trying to work like I'm full time. Mm-hmm. And you can't do that all the time, mm-hmm. no matter how late you stay up. Yeah. So, but we'll get there. Yeah. All right, so progress. Yeah, progress. Why don't you start? Because I've started the last two episodes about what I've been up to. Okay, so I have second written, right? That's what I'm calling it, or edited, mm-hmm. or whatever, right? Chris, Chris writes fast. I write slow. I am completely caught up, except for one chapter. I have I have gone through everything that you've done, except for one chapter, uh, which is pretty awesome. That is amazing. You did it fast. Well, I I mm. do it very you slow. Of, you a lot of time. <laughs> I just put a lot of time into it. And then this is the problem. I still it's so hard for me to figure out the pacing. Like, so you got your, you know, I'm gonna do my three thousand words a day. I spent two hours yesterday on a single paragraph. What chapter was that in? That was uh Brooke decides to go flirt with Elijah chapter. What? And it was a good, it wasn't even a bad paragraph. I just thought, you know what? I, this is the thing. I said, I read some style guides. I've been, because I, mean, I want to be, we want to write fast. We want to tell a good story, but I've also been trying to improve my craft as a writer. So I spent a lot of time. And that's where I'm a little jealous of you, by the way. That I, that I yeah, do that. Yeah. That you get to do that. And it's, I'm the writing whore. It's pretty fun. I'm the word whore. Um, so I spent a ton of time with it. And then I got this paragraph and I thought, you know what? I'm gonna. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna have fun with it and apply some. Is it of like the seduction it's, paragraph? It's. It's not even that. It's. Uh, but it's kind of. It's flirtatious. It's when okay. she's she's at her desk, right, and she's got her legs up on the table, and then her 
her henchman is Elijah's there. not even in that one. Oh, Elijah's not even yeah, there. Okay. No. Uh, that's actually good to hear because that's I would say that was the worst paragraph in the chapter. I didn't have any significant problems with it. I just thought, <laughs> let's have some fun with it. Okay. So I was trying, this is what I was trying to do. I was trying to make it as it was trying to be a sexy chapter, right? This is setting up our, our femme fatale a little bit. Yeah. Uh, and I wanted to make it as non-explicit as possible. But then, so by using certain sentence structures and writing forms, I wanted to give as much impact to these innuendos as possible. Hold on. I have a question. <laughs> yeah. Hold on. Is that the one where, yeah, she and, she and Rex are in the office. That's right. And she takes off her clothes? No, not even that okay. one. It's, oh. like, it's like not even that. It's like she's literally just sitting at her desk <laughs> with her legs up. And, and I decided I'm going to sex the shit out of this chapter, <laughs> but without using any classically sexual terms. We'll see how it goes. Right. <laughs> I was I'm looking, looking forward to it. I was looking up uh, classic, I was looking up art uh, painting terms to talk about uh, the way her body was shaped and like the impact of that. And I was trying to compare it to these other things and... It might be awful, and it might not. It might not fit. It might not flow very well with the rest of the chapter. But it was two hours. I enjoyed them. They might not have been well spent at all, but I enjoyed them. Hold on, were you writing those entire two hours, or were you doing other activities while you were thinking <laughs> and searching the internet? We talked. We had talked at one point about whether or not lonely superhero writers <laughs> yeah. get turned on by the main characters, and I, I was, I was, you were getting there. I was enjoying my craft. I'll just say that. That's why we have a couple artist friends, and I really do think that. Whether it is whether we would put like some sketches in the in the actual electronic book, which is weird but can be done sometimes in a classy way, mm -hmm. especially now that so many people are reading on like fires and phones versus mm -hmm. um, e ink readers. But I totally think it would be so much fun to get somebody to do like some character sketches and to see if they look anything like because we have some really cool. I think there's a couple of really cool descriptions. Yep. Um, now, granted, we're the creators, so we already have them in our mind. Right. But I think that I would love it if someone if someone took our work and, and visualized it. Now, here's the thing, though. So we wanted to tell a superhero story, but I don't particularly like. Okay, I'm gonna. I don't. I don't want to alienate our readers. I don't. We love, don't have any readers. So I don't love fine. comics. I right. love comic book stories. I love the heroes' tales and the mythology and the canon. Um, I just don't love the writing of a comic book. Uh, I miss the narration. I miss the kind of pacing. Right. I, I hate the fact that if they're going to have a reflective scene, the person's got to be like talking out loud to themselves as they walk right. down the street. Uh, so we're trying to take the things that I love about comic book heroes and apply them to in a novelized form. But I think it would be cool to have sporadic visualization. But that's why I think that you have to read a couple of comic book novels. Because you're, you're like the, you know, the canon of Marvel and the DC universes, but it could be good for you to read a couple of these, even like first three chapters. Like that's, that's what, true. that's what I've been doing yeah. because I am not, I'm not the biggest, and this is weird. This could be a good episode. I'm not a huge fan of reading the genre of yeah. superhero. I love urban fantasy. Um, and that's why I wanted to write urban fantasy and you tricked me into this. That's right. Um, and I think it's going to be fine because it has an urban fantasy feel to it as well mm -hmm. but it could be it could be worth your while i think you're right I, I have been trying to read in the indie writer genre uh but you're right i haven't i haven't looked specifically at um the superhero novel um for much inspiration or guidance but maybe and i'll maybe i'll look into that you'll be able to grab a couple for like 99 cents That's or true. first first in the series free i think i yeah. don't think that'll be hard because yeah. you're not on kindle unlimited no okay i do that because i read a lot of indie authors and a lot of them are still on Kindle Unlimited, which should be an episode because we have to decide about that. The, the beautiful thing about our partnership is that you know all about this stuff. I didn't know what Kindle Unlimited was until like a week ago. So <laughs> you figure out which is the best way to, to okay. promote and market and distribute our material, and I will sign off on it. All right. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah. Sounds so good. My, I like so I, I have met my goal. I have kept pace, uh, but I feel like I've done it well. I feel like I haven't right. yet sacrificed quality. But I've been able to keep the pace that we've been setting for ourselves. So I'm pleased with my, myself. How about you? How was your... Hold on. One more question. Oh, sure. Because this is like the goals meeting to begin with segment. Did you set a goal to do that? Did you have a goal for this week and you like went after it? Or you just kept going? I don't remember. I don't I don't listen to the last episode. I don't think you said one on the, on the podcast last night. 
Nope. But you just like got into it. But not only do you do if that. If you don't set a goal, then whatever you do, you've reached your goal. <laughs> You'd be a terrible life coach. <laughs> <laughs> I did talk about trench warfare last week, right? That's my my trench. My last <laughs> trench is whatever I did, I did. I'm still trying to figure out the trench warfare. <laughs> uh, so, but you also did a lot of uh, beating out the chapters. I spent a lot of time beating out part you, three. You killed it on you. You finished uh, part two because I don't even think those were really done. Mm-hmm. Or at least you did some organization on it. That's right. And then you beat out uh, the final part. Yeah, I was all over the place, so I I. I beat out the rest of the chapter. I did the organization stuff, and then I went through and I color coded our chapters, and then I went through and I added updated word counts for all our chapters, mm-hmm. just so we can kind of have a visual like, okay, what's the pacing like? Have we focused too much on one character at the expense of another character? Are we telling the story the way we want to tell it? And kind of can, can we see that at, at a glance? Because we have a couple of these documents where a lot of our ideas are. This is what part of the collaboration. Fun. This is why you need Scrivener. Yeah, I, I yeah. Um, <laughs> Google Docs is. Google Docs is working okay. It's working fine. Yep. Um, it's working fine. But I think we, we keep increasing, we keep adding more and more documents to the thing. So I started a timeline document to I make sure that, that cause if we were planning on writing the future of this goes well, a couple like backstory and develop. So yep. I want to make sure our timeline is solid, um, tight. And we can add to that when we do a final read through. That's right. Too. Yeah, there is, I've, I've become concerned and this is why I'm glad you're taking care of continuity and I don't have to sit there and think about continuity. I can just hammer away at it. And then you can uh, add comments, which you added a lot of them. Because we, we're we like working in a three-day span right now for a good portion of the book. Mm-hmm. So we kind of start, and then we move ahead a week. I'm going to get this wrong. And then a couple days. And then within three days, there's a shit ton of action. Yep. And I'm not really sure if we're always still on the same day. You did mention something like the timing isn't working out here, yep. which I knew when I was writing it. But I'm not sure if I don't think that we can't triple negative jump <laughs> back a little as we go. Yeah, that's so I don't know if I did it with intention, but I knew that I did it, and I thought, okay, that could work because it's like an evening scene and then goes back to like a daytime scene or something. I forget what it was. Well, there's that, but then there's there's a scene that takes place. There's a continuity issue we'll have to fix. But my, my question is, does it throw writers, if they're reading a multiple POV story that works chronologically for the most part, and if it's going out of chronology, it, it makes it pretty clear, hey, this is a flashback, and then they have a chapter that backpedals a couple hours. Because we've done this, and I think... We it, did it with, with uh, Scott's chapter. Yeah. I think it makes for a nice little break in the action sequence. It kind of <clears> it's <throat> tantalizing to have a fight and then cut to a character who's not in the fight realizing what's going on and like running there and then it cuts back to the fight right. so it doesn't it is not technically fluid but it's not that far of a jump okay we'll see we'll see i'm interested hey but you also started an outline for uh book two yeah it's very loose at this moment i've got a couple uh character arcs i know where i want some of our characters to go now i have to figure out What's the mechanism for them to get there? Okay. But, but there's a start. Yeah. A start. This is one of the fun things. Uh, we kick this around all the time. You know, there's like, there's two schools of thought, it seems. There's the Stephen King, you start writing and let the story take you where you will. Pantsing. And then there's the, <laughs> and then there's the uh, strict, hey, outline it all and just kind of stick to the beats. And we've been, we've been doing a little bit of a mixed bag, right? Yeah. Where I, I think I've, most do, but go ahead. Yeah. And so, like, I've, I've beat out the story, but then as you're writing the scenes, you're thinking, hey, it makes way more sense for this character to go in this direction rather than this direction. It's way easier for me to figure out a way to fix the continuity uh, after that point. Yeah. Uh, but I like it because, you know, it's not – it's keeping our chapters – it's keeping us away from kind of a flat yeah. storytelling. Hey, here's part of my hope is that this podcast – we've talked about this before, and we didn't give our disclaimer. If you're a part-time writer mm. – Welcome, but you shouldn't be listening. You should be getting some words in. There are so many great resources out there if you're a part-time writer and you're looking for a solid resource. Yeah. Uh, we recommend all of them. Stephen yeah, King's for this writing, one. the self-publishing podcast. That's not what this is. Yeah, we're really doing this, and we've said it before, but we'll keep saying it. The mission of this is really because I don't, I don't know explicitly of any podcasters that are part-timers and doing this part-time experiment. Mm-hmm. There may be some, but they never talk about being part-timers. Mm-hmm. Everybody I listen to are full-time writers or, you know, quote-unquote authorpreneurs. 
And is that really what they call themselves? Some of them do. Some of them hate the term. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'll have to think about what I feel about that term. Yeah. So, so we think that it's interesting and that we think that some people, I would dig the hell out of this podcast because I am a part-time writer and to listen to part-timers do this would create the context and perspective for me. So I'm not always listening to these full-timers thinking, man, if I could only do this, that as a full-timer. Right. So our project is to document this, talk about the struggles, and hopefully once these start going live, then we'll start building a, a community of part-time authors that are in the same boat, which there are some of those online, but perhaps this part, I, we just hope it's helpful for people. Yeah, I'm a little, you know, this process is very new to me. So I'm like, concerned right so this is a helpful opportunity for me to kind of like get out my fears kind of lay down some expectations if you're listening to this and you are a nervous part-time writer hopefully you're, that's helpful and if you are listening to it give us your feedback hey have you had similar experiences to us um we'll put our twitter handles in the show note you can send us a send yep. us a little give us some encouragement join the community yeah okay so speaking Struggle of struggle along speaking of uh I forget where we were. Insecurities and freakouts. Uh huh. How was your week? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny because I wonder if we're just going to go back and forth. Because last week, I had my biggest writing week ever. And you, I think, did not much of anything. Yeah. And then this week, so you, that's why you had to catch up so much. <laughs> is because I had written, I mean, last week alone, I think I'd written like nine chapters. Mm-hmm. Um, this week, oh my gosh. You're I'm, flying. Your family members started texting me. And they're like, hey, where's Chris? Why isn't he? <laughs> we haven't seen him in a couple days. That's right. We tell him to stop, right? to stop writing beats so fast. Um, no, but but that's a little pointer. And maybe at some point we should get a true pointers episode in for part-time writers. Hmm. Because I could see this being a nice resource, whether like writing it up for a blog or writing it up for even an ebook, Because people need the encouragement of knowing... Well, how do I do this as a part timer and get these this kind of work kind of? Yeah, even if we fail miserably, perfect. Don't do what we've done. No, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're paving the paving the road with our mistakes. Um, so last week, I, w- I was super excited. We were make we had good momentum, and so I was fitting like writing in. I was doing a lot of sprints, so I was doing ten to fifteen minute typing sprints. And I was doing like 10 minute dictation sprints and it was amazing. And the dictation sprints, I would save 20 minutes. So I would mm-hmm. dictate for 10 and then usually it usually takes me about the same amount of time to do a quick edit, um, uh, edit enough to get it into the dot, into the folder for you. So this week and last week in the podcast, I said, well, I'm going to the conference. Yeah. I know it's not going to be a great week, so I'm not going to do 12,000 words. Yep. I'm going to shoot for. 7,000. And I hit, hold on, let me pull up the. This is the moment. This is the moment is Crispin, right here. Is Crispin pulling his weight? What's your, what's your guess? What's my freak out week? Oh, geez. So what? So I said I wanted to get, so the ideal week is 12. Mm-hmm. You were aiming for seven. I said, because I have a conference. It's I could still week. see you freaking out and making more than seven, but you were really freaking out. I'm going to say 5,000. 5,254. I know my partner. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which is still, I mean, again, you're a part time writer, man. You've got family, you've got work, you've got other obligations, you've got a side business you're running. Uh, there is that. I'm not just a, I'm not just a part, I don't just have a day job, I also have a side business. <laughs> you're a part time uh-huh. entrepreneur. Yeah, I'm uh, an entrepreneur. Yeah. 5,000 words. I think that's impressive. Hey, ultimately, I think it's respectable to say if you're a part-time author and you're clocking, let's say, averaging 5,000 words a week, that's freaking awesome because that means you're doing 1,000 words a day and Mm -hmm. taking the weekends off. Which is respectable. I think it's very respectable. That's way more than I pull. And if we're doing – if we end up even just clocking 5,000 words and the the advantage to collaboration is you're, you're like doing rewrites. Yeah. But if we do 5,000 words a week, then in three months, that's a, a novel. That's what we're shooting for. Mm-hmm. So even at that level, which for me is like freak out level, you're doing a novel every three months with a collaborator. Well, that's so it, maybe you can explain your freak out a little bit because it's not the fact that you had a little week. It's the fact that we set some deadlines for ourselves. 
Nah, okay, okay, sort of. Um, Give me the con- I got like the. Yeah, you got the three I mean, in the morning. A weepy message. <laughs> I may have been, I may, or may not have been drinking at the time. <laughs> uh, I was doing searches for things like side effects of Adderall. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, will my wife leave me if I can't make it as a superhero? As a superhero <laughs> author? <laughs> no, but the marriage would be so much stronger. Um, oh, here's why. So last week, after we had the massive week and we had a great time on the podcast, mm-hmm. we decided, okay, let's set a date with my editor, who I've used before, who I love. Um, and so I, I wrote him, and I was actually trying to get an earlier date. Yeah. And he wrote back and said, no, I'm booked until April 25th. So like nearly pretty much 30 days from now. No, March 25th. March 25th. Yeah. I'm sorry, March 25th. So I was like, great, we'll take it. And I was like pissed. I was like, oh, we can't get in sooner. And then I have this week, and I just started to think, oh my gosh, how are we going to make it? <laughs> well, and, this is the problem. We'll, we'll make book one no problem, right? We're five weeks out. Book one is, depending on how long part three ends up being, we are two thirds to three quarters of the way done. I'm sure we're three quarters of the way done. Um, but our plan is to release the sequel a month after we release book one. 20, and release, 28 days later. To release its sequel a month after that. Yeah. So we've got, uh, what? We've got eight weeks basically until book two needs to be finished. For the editor. For the editor. Uh, and we haven't even, technically there are no words on the page yet. That's why we can't, we can't use up until March 25th for book one. That's right. The other thing I could do is tell them, okay, take us out of that slot and put us into your next, the next available slot. But then we lose our 30 day release schedule, which I'm okay with. Yeah, it just means we release book one later. That's true. But the thing we were trying to do is get three, the three books out before the summer slump. Apparently the summer slump is a thing. I believe you on that. It doesn't make sense to me, but I believe you. Yeah. It it doesn't make sense to me either because that's where I read the most. So anyway, that was my freak out. And I think what helped the freak out? You helped me build perspective a little bit. I also knew that. So going to this conference, I'm a you were really helpful. I'm a part-time writer's therapist. As you well. are. Yeah. If you are a part-time writer and you're freaking out, send me a line. I'll, I'll walk you through it. Yeah. Oh, $50, oh, right. $50 an hour. That's right. But you did say this because I was going to um, one of my favorite conferences. I go to it every year. I was speaking at it and lots of my Comic-Con. friends. Shh. Don't give me away. In a couple of years, we'll be going to Comic Con. No breadcrumbs. No, a couple no. of years, we can go. We go this year. When is Comic Con? Well, I mean, we can go as like fans this year. I'm saying in a couple of years. Oh, you want to be on the main stage? Yeah, too. I want a table. I want like an audience. <laughs> I want people dressed up like our characters. <laughs> We're gonna get cosplayers dressed up like our characters. Oh man, we do all. We should get our friends to dress up like our characters, and we like just post it as cosplay posts on like Twitter and Instagram. Shit, I'm gonna get my wife to dress up like that one character, and then not post not it. Not put it on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, this is for Mrs. Barbant if you're listening to this. I didn't mean to. This is for private. I didn't mean to exploit your femininity. <laughs> oh, I thought it was one of the male characters uh, that you're gonna ever dress up as. Okay, so anyway, I forget what I was saying. I walked you through. I was the light in your Oh yeah, you told darkness, me the, you told the board me, in your storm. You said screw that, just go enjoy the conference. Don't worry about writing. And I didn't. And I hated you for it. Because I wish I did just I was like what, seventeen hundred words shy of getting seven thousand <laughs> words. So in those three days, if I just did like six hundred words per day, I would have made my goal. Yeah. And six hundred words, if I dictated it and I had that time. Yeah, but I think I this is the thing too. There's like a personal casing. I think it's okay to not be writing at every. I don't want to. I don't want to burn out. Yeah. Yep. That's true. That's not going to help anybody. That's okay. Good. In other news, if if you burning out makes us some money, though, I might I might stop being your therapist friend. Okay. Keep writing. <laughs> keep writing. Keep writing. Come on, man. We made a deal. <laughs> okay. So in other news, we had a uh, Google Hangout conversation with our cover artists. Yep. 
your first ever. So why don't you talk about that a little bit, and I'm going to uncork some wine. Okay, perfect. Um, so I am visually uh, impaired. That's not the right <laughs> I can see. I just don't see what most people see when it comes to taste and style and proportion. Um, so meeting with our cover artist was funny because we've been looking up, you know, we've been looking at popular titles in the genre. What do, what do other people do? What do theirs look like? You hate them all. I hate them all. I'm looking at all this. I'm like, who would ever buy these books? Meanwhile, they have like 2,000 reviews. Yeah, they're just like super popular. People really like them. I would probably like them if I read them. Um, so we know their author. And I, <laughs> I spent... I spent like an hour on uh, Microsoft Paint, and I, I worked together what I thought was a brilliant uh, cover layout concept. I don't think I don't think he even addressed it. I don't think I don't think he even mentioned it once. Um, this is the soundtrack. This episode brought to you by alcohol. <laughs> brought to you by two buck Chuck. Welcome to the Part Time Drinkers Podcast. Um, <laughs> So no, it was we're, it was for drinkers with a writing problem. It was enlightening the questions he asked, like, hey, he you know, he he spent a lot of time asking us about the story, yep. which was fun to talk about. I've talked about it to very few people outside of Chris and our podcaster listeners here. You've talked to more people than I thought because I had had people come up to me and say, Lee told me about your story. Yeah, well, like they knew it was a secret. I, none of my friends are trustworthy and because I like told them it's a secret and then they I got I think they thought uh, maybe they thought it was safe to talk to me about it. My brother's mother-in-law uh, oh, yeah. the other day was like, "Hey, so I hear you're a writer now. That's fun." And I was like, "It was like at like a dinner, and there was like people around." And I was like, "I like shushed it up quickly." Uh, but that was I don't know her. It's my brother's in-law. I, it was terrible. It was the worst. So was it your sister-in-law or your brother who let the cat out of the bag? I don't know. We're gonna find out. I'm gonna find out, and then I'm gonna write a character in our next story, and then have them die. We'll have them be publicly shamed and, and then die. Yeah. <laughs> no, so it was a fun experience talking about like, hey, I was like, this is what I think we should do. And he's like, well, that's not what I think we should do. Here's what we should do. Uh, going back and forth about like, you know, it's a superhero story, so we should represent the hero on the cover. We were trying to come up with a way to do it in like symbolic form, maybe a little bit more artistic. Um, but I think, we, I think we settled on a compromise. I mean, based on what he described, I think it would be a cover that I would enjoy, but that could appeal to yeah we'll see, we'll see what he comes up with i'm encouraged i totally trust him let's call him christian because that's his name uh clever so christian came up with a couple of different ideas and i think we both like them mm -hmm. the nice thing and we both agree on this is we like his taste yeah but he has not done fiction book right. covers before right and so for him he's being stretched a little bit right which i'm totally okay with yeah, I, I figure this is our first effort. I'm okay with. Yeah, why don't, why just, we're asking readers to give us a shot. Yeah, <laughs> give our illustrator a shot. Yeah, but our main our main question has been in so many ways, and we talked about the Domino Finn post mm -hmm. and Chris Fox's book Right to Market. We're trying to figure out how to. I don't think either one of us are really interested in completely writing to market. No. <laughs> I want to write a book that people will like. Yep. I don't think there's any problem with that. I don't feel ashamed about that, right? We're writing a superhero story, so there's a, there's a ceiling anyway. It's like even if we're aiming for like as excellent as we can be, yeah, it's, it's a still, superhero story. It's still poppy. It's yeah. still fast moving. We're still like doing pacing stuff. We're like, okay, three conversational chapters in a row. We need a bit of action here. Right. Um, Quick chase scene. Go. <laughs> yeah. Quick shoot gun. Spell <laughs> magic. But the problem is. I feel like we're more willing to write to market than to have a cover to market. Yeah. Because both of us, I'm the same way with my nonfiction book. You know this story. Yep. I mean, we came up with a, a cover for the nonfiction book that I thought was really cool, kind of edgy. And then everybody who looked at it, that's not true. A lot of people liked it. But we got from several people, this is like depressing. It's, <laughs> it looks like a, like a sad indie rock album or something. <laughs> And so we you were channeling your, your youth in that. That's right. Your That's 80s, right. your angsty yeah. 80s. Yeah, it was my, um, it was my, you know, pre, uh, I don't know, whatever, pre automatic for the people, REM album cover, <laughs> uh, in black and white. So I think that, that was a really hard part of the conversation because we're willing to write to market, which is the main part of the work. Yeah. But both of us are unwilling to have a book cover to market. 
Like, go, if people haven't seen them, go to Amazon and go to the superhero category. Everyone has a superhero on the cover. Yeah. And that's precisely what we didn't want. Yeah, I just, I like, this is part of the novelization, right? And maybe this this is, contradicts our earlier statements, but there's something about describing the scene using words that allows people's imaginations to, like, rise to the occasion. And, like, that's what I think I want, right? I want to draw our readers in, and I think by being... By not having a picture of, like, Captain America on the cover punching the bad guy. I don't know. I think I think that we – I think it trusts our hopefully future readers a little bit. Well, and that's the thing. Once the picture is on the – so going back to Domino Finn, we're using him because he's, you know, he's got the great post on K-boards. I think he's done an amazing job writing the market. I really like his book cover. Uh, yeah. which you didn't like very much, but I, that's okay. I, yeah, you I prefer it. I read the first, you know, couple chapters of this book. I thought, hey, this was a pretty yep. solid book. I did not like the, the cover. That was, I would not have just bought that book if I saw it. But because of that cover, I have an image of the main character yep. as I read the book. Yeah. And what we're saying is we actually don't want, we want to, we want to shape that with our words. Yeah. And we'll see how, how it all works. We're writers, damn it. <laughs> 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 if we can't, if we can't, part-time writers, damn it. If part-time writers. If we can't, uh, if we can't give a compelling visual of our characters through our writing, I don't care how good our cover is. I don't think it's going to be very successful. Our book. Uh, you have to read more. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, we settled on a, on a compromise that I think is pretty cool. It's got like a. I don't even know if, if he told you this final details. We talked about it this weekend, me and him. Uh, kind of like a shadowy outline of our character. No. Yeah. So you have more information than I do. Uh, so we're going to do it like a vague thing. It's something that's like... Almost oh, like silhouette Yeah. Okay. But then with uh, our hero's symbol... Uh, it's what the hell? Why did anybody tell me this? this? It is... I'm telling you now. So that'll be like the burning... That's right. Oh... That's See, pretty I like, good. I like that. Okay, we're gonna. This is this is meant to be tantalizing. If you're interested in what this cover looks like, cityscape in the background. Cityscape, Since it's very place based. Cityscape in the background. And then some sweet type. Yeah, a really popular, a really cool title, which we have yet to come up with. Okay, maybe we'll maybe we'll get our podcast listeners to help with that. Shoot, yeah. that's gonna be hard because title two. I mean, I've seen some of your titles before. Um, titling to market. Oh man, I am so. I still think, and I don't know. You know, some people are careful about not sharing things on the air because they're worried about people stealing their ideas or their titles. If we get to the point where someone steals our idea, perfect. I'll be pretty happy about yeah. it. Yeah, I was thinking Honestly. because it superheroes. Yeah, Pittsburgh. Yeah, at least making the series name Steel Town Heroes. I like, I like Steel Town Heroes. Okay, I think it's super cheesy, but. I think it effectively conveys. I was in a band in college, uh, and we changed our name ten times. That is no joke. I have got ten different band names that we like actively tried to use uh, before switching the name. We, we, uh, my wife and I got a cat, and we could not decide on a name, so we just named it Cat. Well, we didn't name it Cat. We just called it the Cat until it became its name. This is going to be one hundred percent the hardest part of the book for me. Is coming up with a title that I will like. That's weird because you're good at copywriting, so I thought you'd be good at writing your name. No. Like, you do the show notes for our other podcast. Yeah. So I thought, oh, no problem. Lee will come up with a name. It is. It is. Yeah, I don't care about that other podcast, so I care about this too much. Here's the thing of a crap title. (laughs) Here's what will. No, I think we need rules. So I like the two names, like the blank or one name. Resurrection. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> I was talking to a friend about it the other day and he said that he asked if it was in first person I said no he said oh shoot because you should totally do an I Am Legend style thing yeah uh, which I, that's like one of my favorite titles yep. I Am Legend is an excellent title yeah and it's multiple point of view yeah but that's nice anyways alright if you got cool book title ideas for us <laughs> knowing that superheroes in Pittsburgh in Pittsburgh <laughs> <laughs> They're all right. burgers. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that pretty much wraps it up. All right, what's your goal? What's your goal for this week? Oh shoot. Okay, so you know, we're getting we're getting closer and closer to me just telling people what I do. 
But I won't yet. No, keep it a secret. I have a big week. Part-time writer, full-time mystery. Yeah, I have a big week, a big project, air quotes, this week. It's going to be tight. I have a lot of admin stuff to do this week. I'm going to say stretch goal 10,000. Okay. I'm going to stay with realistic 7,000. I think 7,000 is like the nice, hey, realistically, I can I can do this. Because it's, you know, the 1,000 words a day. I might not write every day. Yeah. So. Okay. I've got two goals for myself this week. I'm going to choose one of them, but I don't know which one. I'm going to let myself. Why you choose both? I'm going to let my, well, I might do that. I might spend a couple sleepless nights. That's like, that's my forte. Mm-hmm. Uh, either I'm going to go back through what I've done from book one so far and clean it up. Because that's one of the things we've been doing it fast, but then leaving like little notes for ourselves. Hey, make sure we come back and yeah. I was reading, this is an aside. Uh, I'm a huge Rick and Morty fan. Rick and Morty, I think, is one of the best shows on television right now. Uh, but I got a, I got a copy of their comic the other day. Oh, really? And I was reading the Rick and Morty comic. Did it start as a comic or the TV show and they made a comic? TV around? show, then they made yeah. a comic around it. But it's still, it's the same team. So partway through the comic, uh, so you know, they, they're like super funny. They're like totally, the characters are kind of like self-aware of the whole genre and stuff. Um, they had a they had a newscaster sequence, and it, and it like the running the running uh you know at the bottom of the news screen they've got those running comments, and those running comments kept like descending into like madness as the the newscast was going on. And at one point it said, uh, "Funny." Funny news title pun here. <laughs> As if they put the note in and forgot to fix it. <laughs> but it's like totally intentional. I loved it. I thought it was brilliant. Anyway. Parenthetically, my wife read a book, a nonfiction book by a big five publisher. And they had that as a, as a subtitle. I need to find it and like take a picture of it. Oh, because man. people don't believe me. It was like. That makes me feel it was like better about myself. Brackets, bold type, bold face, and like, you know, bigger font. Yeah. And it was like. I think that I think they had like a subtitle and then in the brackets some like a note about maybe consider <laughs> and it was like in the hardback edition wow. of the Big Five and it's like you know you wonder we got to clean up our notes because I got like the in parentheses don't, don't fuck this up there's <laughs> <laughs> not writing on this scene <laughs> got, so either I'm gonna go through and clean up that that's the director's cut that's right go through and clean that stuff up or I'm going to pivot and start trying to actually nail down some of the contours of book two, which is I'm terrified about because book one came together so fluidly. We brainstormed for a couple weeks and then when we started putting the plot together, I was just impressed at how easily it fell into pieces. Into yeah. Piece. I'm nervous that we get the book two and it's going to be like, ah, uh, shoot, I don't know. <laughs> what I what do I, I mean, they got to do their taxes, right? Why, let's do it. Let's do <laughs> it's a tax time. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm nervous about that, but I'm also hopeful that that experience will work as well as it worked the first time. Let me shift your perspective a little bit. Go. It was not nearly as smooth as you think it was. <laughs> okay. Like, we worked pretty hard on that. That's true. You had a lot of energy because first project. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, sophomore slump. Yeah. We're, we're not even finished book one yet. We haven't gotten the rave reviews, and yeah. I'm already got to start working on sophomore Pearl slump. Jam 10. You know what? If I was... With the one good song. If I was old enough to understand <laughs> that <laughs> Okay, so it's time for our story, maybe. So it's time to say... Yeah. The end. The end. Start writing. <laughs>